as I am directed to do, to extirpate and exterminate them from the face of the whole earth, and that I will spare neither age, sex, or condition, and that I will hang, burn, waste, boil, flay, strangle, and bury alive these infamous heretics, rip up the stomachs and wombs of their women, and crush their infants' heads against the walls, in order to annihilate forever their execrable race that when the same cannot be done openly, I will secretly use the poisoned cup, the strangulating cord, the steel of the pinyard, or the leaden bullet, regardless of the honor, rank, dignity, or authority of the person or persons, whatever may be their condition in life, either public or private, as I at any time may be directed so to do by any agent of the Pope or superior of the Brotherhood of the Holy Faith, the Society of Jesus. O oh, friend, I praise God for the lovely Jesus who shed his precious blood for you and for me. And he has promised to protect his dear people from all evil. Now, you might be astonished and shocked right now, but you know to be forewarned is to be forearmed. Uh, it's necessary that you get a glimpse of this vast system of Babylon, even uh, starting right back in ancient Babylon, coming right down through time. Protestants have tampered with and patronized popery. They have made compromises and concessions which papists themselves are surprised to see and fail to understand. Men are closing their eyes to the real character of Romanism and the dangers to be apprehended from her supremacy. The people need to be aroused to resist the advances of this most dangerous foe to civil and religious liberty. This is Great Controversy 566. Now notice this last sentence. The people need to be aroused to resist. You see, the word resist means to do something and not nothing. The advances, that means it's moving of this most, notice the word most dangerous, foe to civil and religious liberty. Now, who said this, friend? Was it a madman? No, it was the loving and kind prophet of God. Uh, persecutions of the past will be repeated when the threefold union unites for the exaltation of Sunday. You see, friend, we're, no in, we're not in any uh, Disneyland here. We're in a battle, friend. And I believe that God's Seventh Adventist people need to comprehend what's happening, what's going on, so that we won't just drift along until the devil can spring his trap. This is why, of course, the book National Sunday Law was written so that as time even now is running out for this world and as this Sunday law which the devil has been planning for a long time and originated with the mother of harlots is getting closer and closer. God's people will have a tool that they can use to put on doorsteps, phone booths, benches, give to people, bulk mail to thousands of preachers and rural routes which church, Adventist churches have already been doing all over this country to help people avoid the mark of the beast that will, of course, plunge millions into the lake of fire of hell. Oh, friend, we need to get God's three angels' messages out. We don't understand how much we need to do it. The Great Controversy, page 570. If we desire to understand the determined cruelty of Satan, manifested for hundreds of years, not among those who never heard of God, but in the very heart and throughout the extent of Christendom. We have only to look at the history of Romanism. Through this mammoth system of deception, the prince of evil achieves his purpose of bringing dishonor to God and wretchedness to man. And as we see how he succeeds in disguising himself and accomplishing his work through the leaders of the church, we may better understand why he has so great antipathy to the Bible. All that he asks is a broken and contrite heart, a humble, obedient spirit. Now, watch closely as I show you documentation of how the papacy is uniting with every conceivable organization, including uh, the charismatic movement, and then you're going to see the Catholic charismatic attack on God's SDA church in a number of different ways. Oop, John Paul II, the whole world is a church. 
National Council of Churches delegation visits Pope. Pope calls for a world army. Who would lead it? Catholic Church aims to convert half the world. These are newspaper clippings. There's a Pope with the religious leader of Russia and England. Yes, uniting with every conceivable group. Here are Sunday visitor. Religion and the collapse of communism tells the papacy moving in. Here is a paper showing 23 denominations getting together. Pope calls for united Europe. And Baptist Catholics examine their shared belief. Billy Graham with the Pope brought him a homemade quilt for North Carolina. Pope's English visit may stir Anglican Catholic closeness. Pontiff praises Soviet Christians. Experts, New Age and Pentecostal beliefs, very similar. Friend, this is shocking. It tells that the New Age movement is going into churches, infiltrating the Catholic Church, Protestant churches. It's unbelievable. It calls it fast, vibrant, growing. It uh, brings to view self-healing with self-healing books, all in the Christian bookstores. And just spiritualism and sorcery coming right in to the churches, making the threefold union that will lead to the national Sunday law. Charismatic renewal of the church broadside. Here's 40,000 people meeting together, Episcopalians, Roman Catholics, and all kinds. Yes, in the charismatic renewal. Here's a letter to me from a lady over 90 years old from Maine. We thank you for your nice letter and the reports you've given us. We heard a couple of years ago about the Jesuits and the Black Pope. My husband and I came from Germany in 1933. I came out of school and remember when Hitler came and took over. He was Catholic and the Gestapo was Jesuit. Germany, the U.S., is in a situation like Germany was back before Hitler took over. The Baptists in Germany helped Hitler get in. Hitler cleaned Germany up from filth and homosexuality. Today, it reminds me of Germany. And I am not surprised that the Jesuits have infiltrated all other organizations. Bush appeals to Pope, world leaders. Here is U.S. News and World Report, August 13, 1990. Look at this, friend. It says, Rome calling. Pope John Paul II discusses world affairs on the telephone with George Bush and Gorbachev at least once a week. There's a Jesuit priest, and this article in Catholic World tells about his journey into the New Age movement, and uh, he talks a lot about this type of thing. Look here, it mentions psychedelics, uh, trips to the Magic East, uh, experiences with the New Age movement. Up here, he talks of uh, cosmology, new physics, meditation practices. Uh, here, Jesuit tradition. The question was asked to him. It says he saw people going off the deep end all over the place. Friend, this is demon possession type of thing that he was seeing. Apparition of angels. Look at their spirits appearing to them, being in touch with ancestors. He says this is very biblical stuff. I could read John on the cross, of the cross, and Ignatius Loyola with new eyes and ears. Amazing. He says it is a lay movement. Now here is a Christian bookstore. It talks about psychology and self-improvement. You're going to see some amazing things here. I had an interview with a man in this bookstore, Feeling Good Handbook. He tells how he's a student there at the medical school, and he sees these New Age books. Look at their Goodbye to Guilt, Teach Only Love. It sounds wonderful, wonderful. The one on the right, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And a uh, evangelist friend of mine studied the principles of that book, How to Baptize More People. He told me, Jan, he said, after I baptize him, I never want to see him again. Oh, friend, pray for this dear man and all of these dear people studying these New Age spiritualistic things. These books are in bookstores all over the country, including the one here at Loma Linda. This was told to me by Dr. B.G. Wilkinson, who was president of the college. There had been a new Bible instructor hired by the board. And this man had been teaching Bible to the undergraduate theological majors for about five months. Now, Dr. Wilkinson had always encouraged an open-door policy, and he encouraged the confidences of his students, especially his theological students. Now, some of these young men came to him after a period of about four or five months, and they said, Dr. Wilkinson, there's, you know, you, you teach Bible differently than this new Bible instructor does. There's some things about him that we don't understand. He brings up doubts in the classroom doubts about our theological position, about our doctrines. These doubts are then not resolved. They're left sort of hanging in the air. 
And they had other questions, which 